Yeah, so I picked a Throw It Away by uh, The Germs. It's another LA band. This is a the EP that came after uh, the first record, and, and I just think it has like a it has a, just a really really snappy hard edge to it. They're just like for me like the the best punk band ever. Don Bowles kicks some serious ass on these songs. He also happens to drum in my band now, so take note. He, it kicks ass. He's the muse for this record. He's really, really is uh, what, what uh, got me all excited about playing again. He just got involved with this record at the perfect time. It was really serendipitous, and uh, it really took it to the next level for it for us, in my opinion. It's a pleasure and an honor to have him to have this oracle involved in this record. Several oracles. It's a really cool track. It's a really, it's like them and on the on their sort of on the later tip as well, like just kind of like on their way out. Uh, but it's a really good, good track. Also, Don Bowles uh, involved in that, in that band, and uh, uh, that song in particular is one of their later songs. I think it's Paul Cutler, and, uh, uh, and then Don. Don. Don sings the chorus, you know, like, With lots of things and ice cream to eat. To me, all this stuff just reeks of LA. Oh, I, I take it for granted that like the, this thing gets kept secret. Actually, this um, the scene doesn't really like actually like have too many. It, it has an international awareness or something like that for punk, old aging punkers or something like that. But like, there's still so many aspects to it that are just not that haven't been absorbed into <clears throat> culture even though everything's absorbed now, like, you know, with a vengeance. It's one of the things that I love about LA, though. It's, 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 it's sort of like, it's, it's, the tame version of it became the Bangles. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's kind of like, Belinda Carlisle was in the germs. And, uh, anyway. Then we got Cocktail Twins. And this is just like one of my favorite songs from this 4ID, 4AD uh, band. I think my dad or my stepmom might have bought the record. It just has this really, really rich melody that like they don't, they, the, the Cocktail Twins would, they were always smearing things. And um, this song has like a very, very fat kind of hook to it. Yeah, I just, I just always like that song. I just like itchy glow, blow, blow. blow. The itchy go blow blow just feels like it's completely alien in this very adult, you know, you're like your uncle kind of way. Like it's like that's something your uncle or your aunt would listen to.
Vahog uh, Circadian is this guy that uh, works at Mercado in uh, Little Ethiopia in LA, and he, he just works the, the, the register. He had a, one of his tapes that he recorded uh, in the early 80s, and uh, I bought it for two dollars. But I used to I used to shop at this this place and get all got all the Ethiopian tapes there. His is really good. He recorded these things like at home uh, a long time ago, and he's like you know doesn't see himself as the other thing about Ethiopians is that they're they're extremely humble people. There's just no pizzazz to it. It's, it's, it's all about being just a real person. He was just like the guy that basically would would uh, be slightly entertained by by me and Tim Co going in there every week and just you know just buying the place out. Like we just would go to the cassette bins and we'd just be like just like. like rummaging through it and he was thinking like, you know, what are these white guys doing here? What is this Asian guy doing here? So, but uh, but he's, he's a lovely guy and, uh, and we're still, we're Facebook friends now. And then there's a cuckoo Kuku Seb Sebe wrote this song, this other song, and she was recorded more in the early 80s. Um, it's like the saddest song ever. It's like really, really, really emotional. I actually learned how to read Ethiopian by, by, by getting into this music and seeing these videos. Uh, that were uh, that were released at the time, and this is when it was like a communist. So like, there's no n none of these artists who who were like actually considered pretty famous there. That none of them were like actually re releasing records anymore. It was illegal. So they but they would still play their music and they would still record music. I think I think what the way that it worked was that these the the Roja band, which was like essentially the JBs of of Ethiopia. You know, they're just like the funk band, the the, the, the funkiest most great jazz fusion band ever and they they would do all these instrumental tracks in the middle of the night they would record them you know uh, behind a locked door and that kind of thing the music itself sounds like funk played backwards you know to our ears you know like it's just like extremely like disorienting rhythmically and uh, it's also very very weird and undulating and kind of like almost kind of this liquid wah quality to it that just makes it feel like it's it's been like you know sitting under a mattress for a long time and just like very worn in i mean like it's, it's, it's a little bit it has has some early haunted graffiti qualities to it for sure <laughs> Botulism, 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 whatever. I just found this on YouTube one time, and it was a, uh, it was uh, listed as one of the most extreme black metal things out there, and uh, I really, really, really took to it. The vocals are just extremely extremely uh, evil and, and the music is just just about the fastest it could possibly be so it's like not for pussies it's really 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 fast it's just like <laughs> black metal vocals are just very very um, they're like yeah they're like, they're like gargoyles you know it's like, it's like it's 
like really, 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 really evil shit. Christ fighter. It seems like they're like they're like kind of like a parody of black metal. They they they, they make this sort of like a, a, a sort of relationship between gayness and black metal and metal and gayness, which is kind of like in a sense a sort of like precursor to the whole uh, baby black metal thing that we have going on now. So, you know, we're like, you're equating all the angst of a thousand dark metal bands and, and guys that like are just, you know, pouring out their, like, these, these riffs over the past 20 years, and you're equating it to like being like some cute little girl who basically is like expressing herself and, and, and uh, really cute and really heavy, that kind of thing. Like it's, that, that's, but that's essentially what's become of metal has become this very, very cute little Asian girl.